Hello and welcome to another episode of Sea of Thieves News. We've got a sack full of festive goodies to unwrap, including news on updates we're bringing to the features we introduced with Season 8. So warm your hands by the fire and grab a mulled grog. Let's get to it, shall we? We're kicking off the Festival of Giving with a special festive live stream. On the 16th of December, join us as we celebrate the season, look back on 2022, and switch on the Festival of Giving decorations in-game. There may also be one or two other surprises in store, so make sure to join us on twitch.tv forward slash Sea of Thieves on December the 16th. And that's just the beginning of the Festival of Giving celebrations. We're also running Twitch drops from the 19th of December to the 2nd of January, where you can unlock cosmetics from the Frozen Horizon clothing and accessories set. Head on over to seaofthieves.com forward slash Twitch drops for more information on what cosmetics are available and how to get involved. From the 23rd to the 26th of December, we'll be running the Gifts and Glory event in-game. Any gold, allegiance, renown, or reputation you earn during this time will be boosted, so make the most of this special time and reap the rewards of your voyages. All players who log in during this time will also receive a special Gilded Voyage. And Grogmane returns for another year. From the 30th of December to the 2nd of January, players can take part in grog fueled challenges to earn the Grogmane event flag, the Bildrat Celebration Firework, and the Grogmane Annual Tankard. Our new Christmas song, Captains of Adventure on Yule Tides, is now available on your favourite music streaming services. It's the perfect piratey seasonal number, complete with the sort of jingling bells necessary to liven up your festive shindig. And to tickle your ear holes even further, Sleighbell Selects, a collection of three seasonal variants of in-game shanties, will be sliding its way onto streaming services on the 16th of December. There's new Christmas-themed merch in the Rare Store too. There's both classic and brand new designs, including festive sweatshirts, the Trading Company's flag collection, and a selection of Christmas cards, sacks and stockings. And over in the Pirate Emporium, we've got a whole range of items that are perfect for the high flyers of the Sea of Thieves. With the Soaring Oracle ship set, you'll feel the wind beneath your wings on your adventures. Unfurl the sails and catch the air like a bird in flight to sail safely under the watchful eyes of your protector. Carved from bleached driftwood, the muted colours of this ship are perfect for pirates who prefer things of a more understated, refined nature. The design of the Soaring Oracle's weapons echoes the elegance and restrained ferocity of the feathered predators of the night that inspired them. And with the Soaring Oracle costume, you can rise gracefully above your worries and find moments of tranquility in melodic meditation. Some pirates think the cost of seeing the future is never seeing the present, though others remember to take off the blindfold. And there's also the Rare Goods Trinket Bundle, so you can decorate your ship with figurines inspired by outlandish stories from distant places. The Boreal Aurora ship set makes its return after its debut in the Season 5 Plunder Pass. Who could have imagined the Aurora Borealis at this time of day in this part of the sea, localised entirely within this ship set? Wonders never cease. And there's also the Nautical Dance Emote Bundle. Borrowing from some unexpected sources, these dances let you continue sailing even when you're on land. You can also grab the Tree Decorator Emote for free and have your very own star to light up the dark. If only you could find a tree to perch it on. And as we've reached that special time of year, it's only right that some of our festive favourites return to the Pirate Emporium. The Festival of Giving Weapon Set and Pet Costumes are available once again. And you'll be able to send a shiver down the spines of pirates throughout the sea with the Bone Chiller Costume. We're also running a special Pirate Emporium holiday sale. From the 23rd of December to the 3rd of January, you can get your hands on a range of heavily discounted items. So pop on in and see what's on offer. In case you missed it, the Rogue's Legacy Adventure is live now and will be available until December 22nd. Work with your crew to complete this treasure hunt set by Captain Briggsy and uncover fragments of the past. 
And if you manage to do just that, you'll earn Tasha's enchanted compass. And now, we're going to catch up with senior designer George Orton as he takes us through the updates and quality of life changes that are coming to the PvP features we introduced with Season 8. So Season 8 has launched, we're incredibly happy with how it's launched and we're loving watching stories of players engage in this PvP on demand. But with the amount of players we're seeing go through this flow, um, there are a couple of things we noticed that could be tweaked to further improve the experience for all crews of all sizes and skill levels. Players have been using blunder bombs quite a lot as part of the PvP flow that we introduced in Season 8, but we noticed they're being used a little bit too much, so we want to kind of limit the amount that, that players can find, so we fixed a couple of exploits within some of the tall tales that were giving away too many blunder bombs. We very slightly reduced the amount of blunder bombs that players will find around the world, and we've also uh, slightly reduced the amount of blunder bombs that you get in a tactical captaincy restock of your ship. And then the other direction that we approach blunder bombs from is that they are a little bit more effective than we perhaps wanted them to be, especially now that we're seeing them used in such high numbers. So we've slightly adjusted the balance to sort of bring them more in line with their thrown versions. So the area of effect of a blunder bomb fired out of a cannon um, that was 10 meters, which is massive, versus the thrown version, which only has an area of effect of 5 meters. We've now addressed that, and they're both the same. So whether it's fired or thrown, it will now have an area of effect of 5 meters. And we have also dramatically reduced the vertical impulse that we apply to a player when they're hit by a blunder bomb, which keeps the blunder bomb useful, but also reduces the likelihood of entire crews being popcorned off their ship. So with crews engaging in constant battles across the Sea of Thieves at the moment, resources are obviously in high demand. If you're going to win a battle, it stands to reason that you'll need plenty of cannonballs and plenty of wood. We want to make sure that players have more than enough resources to enjoy battles and to kind of reduce the amount of time that players feel they have to spend restocking their ships between battles. We've approached this from a number of directions. The first one is that sunk ships will now jettison their wood, food and cannonball barrels. So once a ship is fully sunk, those barrels will float up to the surface. They'll still contain all of the resources that that crew was keeping in them previously. And they're there for either that crew to rescue a couple of supplies before they get taken away, or for the victorious crew to kind of snatch those barrels up, restock themselves before diving into the fight and getting away again. It basically helps kind of streamline the whole process and also eliminate it's the need for crews to sort of spawn camp each other whilst they're siphoning off resources. We've also looked at the level of resources that ships start with, both at the start of a session and once they're sunk and respawned. All ships will now have considerably more cannonballs and a larger supply of wood ready for the fight. Um, and we've also added coconuts uh, to all crews, food barrels, so that you've got a higher value um, health resource there if you do take any damage during a battle. Also, when a ship that's representing either of our new factions sinks, they will now respawn at an outpost rather than at one of our islands. This was done with a view to making it much easier to restock your ship. Obviously, outposts have a ton of barrels and the merchant stocks that you can purchase, and it also makes it much easier for crews to re-raise any lost emissary flags and sort of get back into the, the flow of the session much quicker. In addition, we've also seen a few players come across an exploit, um, or using this exploit, um, that you can engage in a battle whilst near areas of Red Sea and kind of lure enemy crews into an unfair trap. This is particularly prevalent around the shores of gold. We've now fixed the exploit with the Red Sea um, around the shores of gold so that you won't be able to get into a battle there. No crew can invade you there. You can't invade another crew there, which means that battles will now take place in purely fair arenas. So that hole has been plugged. Stop it. We've made a ton of these changes. We're really pleased with these changes. We hope they lead to a much fairer experience for players uh, when they release later this month. It's certainly not the end of us looking at the experience. We'll be constantly evaluating what goes on as these changes land. Um, and rest assured, we'll be making more changes to keep the experience fun for everyone going forward. And that's us for another episode. 
We hope that you have an amazing holiday break, that you get lots of presents, and that the festive cheer spreading across the sea reaches you and yours. So for the final time of 2022, if you liked what you just saw, remember to like, subscribe, and jingle those bells for all those notifications. Cheers.